In this video, I'm going over how to set up the Samsung Galaxy A53. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to set up the Samsung Galaxy A53 and some specific tweaks to make to get the best experience out of your phone. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is swipe down from the top of the screen here, upper right corner, tap on the little settings wheel. And we're gonna to go to our display section of the settings, swipe up, tap on screen timeout, and we're gonna change this to either two minutes or five minutes. This way, your screen will not go dim as fast. This will keep the screen on longer without you touching the screen. So always recommend to do that right out of the box. Next, we're gonna to connect to our Wi-Fi network, swipe down from the top of the screen, and the upper left corner, you'll find this little icon. That is your Wi-Fi icon. And I just did a swipe down to get to more of the menu. Now, if this is lit up in blue, it means your Wi-Fi is uh, turned on on the phone. Now, if we want to connect to our Wi-Fi network, we're going to just hold down on this icon for one second. It will take us to this menu. And now we can look for our network and begin to connect. I'm going to connect to the Meatloaf 2.4 you'll simply tap on it. Obviously in your house, it'll be a different code, but look for your Wi-Fi network, tap on it, and at this section, you would enter the password. Once you've entered the password, you'll hit connect. And there we go. You should see connected under your network, and that's how you'll know you are now connected to your home Wi-Fi. This will also work if you're out in public, if you're at a Starbucks or a Denny's, you wanna to connect to their network, follow those same instructions, and that's how you get on the Wi-Fi. Now, for the next tip, I wanna show you how to change your wallpaper on the phone. This is the stock wallpaper here, but if we hold down on just a blank spot of the screen, in the left corner, you'll find the option wallpaper and styles. You'll tap on that. And you can either go to my wallpapers, which is what's already installed in the phone. For us, we can see what other wallpapers are already available. There's always a few nice ones in there. You can select one of these. You can go to uh, the gallery, which is a picture that you've taken. If you've taken a picture on your phone, if you tap gallery, it'll let you make that the wallpaper for the phone. Or you have the wallpaper service here, which is the lock screen wallpaper service. Tap on there and you can have some cool things uh, show up on the screen uh, with the wallpaper service. One last thing you can do as well, is next to wallpapers is themes. And if you tap on themes, it will take you to the Samsung theme store. And here you can actually go through and find free and paid wallpapers that you can put on your phone. And they do change by the season. Sometimes they have sports teams. There's a big selection you have available. So check that out. You'll find different wallpapers and themes and different icon styles as well to go with your phone. Hopefully the update is done. And now we can look through and these are just some of the options you have to pick from to change your wallpaper. Okay, in the next section we're gonna go over, hey, how do I transfer all the data from my old phone to my A53? Well, here's what you're gonna do. Swipe down from the top of the screen. We're gonna go back to our settings wheel in the upper right corner. We're gonna swipe up. And we're gonna go to the accounts and backup tab. And then we're gonna to go to bring data from old device. Hit agree. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna download the Samsung Smart Switch app, which is the app that will allow you to take your pictures, your videos, your contacts, um, text messages, call log. It'll take all that information from your old phone and move it to your phone right now. So we're gonna go home. It's installing the app right now. So if I swipe up and get to my app section, oh, so if you just give it a minute, it'll just open automatically actually. So if you look at it, the app is opening right now. We're gonna just go through the prompts here. And so now our phone is set up and ready to receive data from our old device. Now, all you'll need to do is on your old phone, turn it on, go to the Play Store, and you'll just need to search for the Samsung Smart Switch app on that old phone and download it. And then on your old phone, it's gonna show this same screen once you download the Samsung Smart Switch app. 
you'll tap send data on the old phone and on the new phone you'll tap receive data and they will basically find each other pair and then you'll be able to select what you want to transfer from your old phone to the new phone so that's simply all you have to do to transfer all your data from that old phone to this phone all right next we're going to go over downloading essential apps so one of the things samsung has done recently is they don't put as many apps on the phone to start because they're trying to save your data space and your storage but there are some really cool apps that they offer that you should look into downloading on your phone so on the home screen you're going to tap on galaxy store and in the right corner upper right corner tap on the little magnifying glass and if you just type in Samsung and hit search or the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner, it will bring up a list of all of the Samsung uh, stock apps that you can download for this phone. So there is a Samsung music player. So if you brought over MP3s or music files from your old phone, this will allow you to play those songs on, you, on your phone right now tap on this little drop down here to download those apps as we swipe up we have samsung health which can track your steps water intake allow you to connect to the samsung watch if you have one there's a samsung plus tv app that will allow you to watch shows on your phone there is a samsung wallet as well that will allow you to uh, use samsung pay and also um, store other financial data on your phone there is samsung members which actually gives you different perks for having a samsung phone also has a diagnostic tool built in if your phone is not working properly it can help you with uh, diagnosing your phone there is a samsung email app samsung notes which i also recommend this is a great app to keep notes on your phone so um, um let's see that's already there there's even a Samsung blockchain wallet that you can use to store your crypto on your phone safely as well. So I encourage you to swipe through here and see if there's any apps that you like and might be useful to you. One other one is Samsung Video Library. This also helps you organize all the videos you've taken on your phone to make it easier for you to go back through and look at them later. So this is simply the um, Essential apps, go through and find what is relevant to you and download it because Samsung makes great apps for their phones. But again, they're not putting them all on the phones to try to save some of your storage. Okay, next we're gonna go over how to set up your fingerprint sensor so you can unlock the phone with your fingerprint. We're going to swipe down from the top of the screen, upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel again. We're going to go to the biometrics and security screen and we're going to tap on fingerprint so on this phone you can set up two things a facial recognition so bringing the phone up to your face it will automatically unlock seeing your face or you can set up the fingerprint sensor in this case I'm just going to set up the fingerprint sensor you can always come back to this screen and tap on facial recognition when you're ready to set up that for yourself as well but let's tap on fingerprints tap continue now, before you can set up a fingerprint, it will ask you to first set up a lock screen password, which is a backup in the event that your fingerprint sensor ever stops working. This will give you another way to sign to your phone. I'm gonna do the pattern, or excuse me, the pin, and just make it four zeros. There we go. Now that we have a pin set up, now I'm gonna take my finger and begin tapping it on the fingerprint sensor, which is right here. And all you'll want to do is just put it down and lift, put it down, lift, try to adjust your fingerprint in different positions over the button so it can read more of your fingerprint. Also try to hold the phone how you normally hold it because that will also make the reader more accurate to the fingerprint. There we go. And we're almost there. Okay, there we go. Now, one more important tip, I always recommend setting up more than one fingerprint because sometimes 
you might have oil on that one fingerprint or maybe you're holding the phone with your other hand and you just wanna have a fingerprint on both hands set up. So I would tell you hit add and add a second fingerprint just as a backup. In this case, I'm gonna hit done, hit agree. And guess what? Now I can turn the screen off, use my fingerprint, one tap to wake up the screen and then tap there. And now I'm able to unlock the phone using my fingerprint. Okay, next we're gonna go over how to sign into your email accounts on your phone. So the easiest way to do this is go to the Google folder you'll find on the home screen and go to Gmail. Now a lot of people don't know this, but with the Gmail app, you can actually sign into other email types that are not Gmail. All you have to do is tap here, add an email address. And these are all the supported types for this phone. So obviously a Gmail, a Hotmail, Outlook, a Live, a Yahoo, or Exchange, or Office 360. So you have uh, a few different options that are available for you to sign in to your accounts. Now, you might be saying, well, what if I have an email account that is different than what I'm seeing on this screen? For example, what if I have an AOL or an sbcglobal.net? Well, here's a cool tip of how you can sign into those email accounts if you don't see it in this list here. We're gonna go to the Play Store. We're gonna tap where it says Google Play. And what I'm gonna do is simply uh, hit the button in the, up, the bottom left corner here and tap the at symbol. And whatever your email account type is, you're gonna enter it here. So for example, for AOL, I'm just gonna type AOL.com. So at AOL.com, hit the search. And it's gonna bring up apps that it recommends for me to use with that email type. So in this case, there is a specific AOL app that I can use for this. I'm gonna tap install. I'm gonna swipe up and just so you can see, there are some other apps that are showing up here, the Samsung email app, um, this regular email app. So all these other apps will support this email type. And that's what you can use to sign to that email. Now, if I tap in the box here, I'm gonna erase this. And now I'm gonna type in sbcglobal.net. I'm gonna hit the search again. And here are other apps that will support sbcglobal.net. So that's an easy tip on how to find a comparable app that will work with your email type. Now all you have to do is just simply swipe up and either go to that email uh, app, um, which would be the AOL one or the uh, Gmail app one you'll find here, sign to your email account, and you're good to go. And our very last setup tip is gonna be how to stop the apps from moving on your home screen. So sometimes um, you might have set up your screen a certain way, and then guess what? This app gets moved all the way over here for some reason. Could be because it's the phone's on your pocket or you've let one of your younger kids or, or nieces or nephews play with the phone and they've moved all the apps all over the place. So there's a little tip you can um, do on the home screen to lock the apps in place so they can't be moved unless you turn this feature off. So take your finger, find a blank spot on the screen, hold down. We're gonna tap on settings and here, I'm going to look for the option that says lock home screen layout and turn this on. Now if I hit the home button, if I try to hold down this app to move it, I can't. It's going to say your home screen is locked, it can't be moved. This is a great way to just again lock down the screen so once you have the phone set up how you want it, things will not move out of place. And that's it. This has been our how to set up your Samsung Galaxy A53 tutorial. Hope you found this helpful. Do us a favor, hit that like button if it was helpful. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Also, leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite tip was in this video. We always love hearing your comments. Thanks for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.